Hello and welcome to the Transition Podcast. I'm Jesse. And I'm Josh. And uh, this time I'm not in Taipei, as I have been previously. I'm actually back here in the studio, in person. Yeah, welcome back. So we're finally back in the same studio, and we thought we'd start a new series of the podcast, fill you guys in on some of the highlights, what we've been up to recently, and... And look to the future as well, which at the moment... To be honest, I'm freezing here. I'm, I'm not really used to this whole winter thing, having been in Taiwan for the last number of years. You know, yeah. winter, winter in Taiwan is kind of, you know, you get to 15 degrees and everyone's in their puffer jackets. But this is true winter here in England. Yep, back experiencing it. But enough of that. No, we're looking to the future to um, fill you guys in on some of our plans, what, what we're going to be up to, and, you know, some surprises hopefully as well. So, Josh, fill me in on one of your highlights of 2021. Well, I think, to be honest, one of the big highlights of the whole year for Transition, for us, was not actually about Transition. It was about our good friend Wing, Law Wen Yu, who won a Golden Melody Award for his album When the Sun Rises, or Dang Taiyang Sheng Qi Shi. So, um, remind me what a Golden Melody is. Why would we... Why would we be interested? Why would we be excited about a Golden Melody? Because yes. this is the most prestigious award in Mandarin music. Golden melodies are the big ones. That okay, that's compare it to something that, that I would know about here in the UK. Probably Grammys. Grammy, the, okay. The, you know, yeah. And uh, so the, the, the Golden Melody Awards, they're awarded, it's by the Ministry of Culture in Taiwan, actually. Okay. But um, it's got a long history. It's not closed for those within Taiwan only. It, you know, it's yeah. an open thing. So it's generally, it, it, the Golden Melody Awards are for Mandarin music, mm. except that it's it's slightly broader than that in that there are categories for other, uh, other languages as well. So you have indigenous language ones, you have Hakka language, you have the uh, Taiyu or the Hokkien, Mingnan, whatever you so want to call it. So that would be like having a UK-wide awards ceremony having Welsh included in there, Scottish, maybe a bit of a Celtic or something. Yeah, it could be. Cornish, it could be. Cornish in the awards. That's right. Although it wouldn't usually be that wide. So for example, okay. you know, talking about indigenous languages, there's mm. there's lots and lots of them, but it, yeah. it's just the best indigenous album is taken from within all of the indigenous music. Mm. Um, in terms of the Hakka music, again, there's actually a few different dialects of Hakka within Taiwan only. I mean, there's other really? dialects of Hakka around mainland China as well, but um, and, and further afield <laughs> around the world. So it gets complicated. It does get complicated, but that's what I mean. That, you know, So Wing, he won the best Hakka album, So, but yeah. it's not limited to Taiwan only. Actually, you know, you could be any Hakka from anywhere in the world. Okay. Uh, release a Hakka album. You so can we could sing in Hakka. For the Golden Melody Awards, we could sing in Hakka if we were that talented. <laughs> Can we do it? Maybe that's... You mean if I was that talented? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I say we. Uh, uh, I'll smile from behind the drums and laugh yeah, okay. when you get it wrong. Sing some of the chorus lines. Yeah, that's probably quite yeah. a good idea, though. I think it would be cool to um, cooperate with Wing and actually, you know, it's it's unusual still for non-hacker people to sing in hacker. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. Still, anyway, watching the awards, unfortunately we couldn't be there in Taipei for the awards. Yep. Originally, I was you know, really hoping to to be there and be on the red carpet and all the rest of it. Were but you invited? Yes. That, wow. you know, yeah. Not just invited, invited to the after party and everything as well. Oh. So I was a bit gutted to miss it all. Um, Why couldn't you go? Well, the first reason was I was back here. Okay, uh, the in the second, UK. The second reason was because the whole awards ceremony was delayed from when I probably would have been in Taiwan yep. until much later because of... They, they had a mini outbreak of... The virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah COVID-19, as everyone knows, still going on. So that delayed the whole awards ceremony. Mm. Uh, but mm. thankfully, it didn't get cancelled. Um, it was all broadcast live online, so we did watch Wing win his award live. Yeah, I like, really uh, enjoyed that. Fantastic. In his um, speech, he thanked his band. Obviously, you were a member of his band, so that was really nice to hear how much his fellow musicians and kind of the people that he collaborates with meant to him and also how... Yeah, how he just valued his team. Well, I think one of the other really cool things about... So we're talking about... Uh, I mentioned this album from our friend Wing, Law Wen Yu. Yeah. Uh, it's called Dang Taiyang Sheng Qi Shi, which means uh, when the sun rises. Mm. If you want to actually understand more about this particular album, the songs on it, the stories behind it, then there's a whole documentary that he made. You know, it's a documentary of the making of the album. Yeah, okay. Which was made as we recorded the album. Mm. Um, mm. And it's available on YouTube. So we'll, we'll pop a link up in the description and you can click through if you're interested. And uh, I translated the English subtitles. So um, 
if you can't understand Hakka or Mandarin, then that's fine as well because you can actually read what's going on and you can that's get great. a feel for, yeah. you know, the whole process of the songwriting, the recording and how we did it all. Mm, mm. So, so yes, a highlight to see that being recognised, certainly. Can you then name me a, a highlight of recording that particular album? Were there any sessions or any particular songs that stood out to you as being, well, that's memorable, meaningful? Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, if you were to see the documentary, then you can you can see that we're all in this wooden house. It's not in the studio. We took all the studio equipment back to Wing's hometown in the right, south of Taiwan, right. in in the kind of this really countryside area. So location was really important to him. The fact that he was near the place where he grew up. That's right, because a lot of the songs were inspired by his experience of growing up in his hometown. So mm. that there is a theme. Mm to the album of that kind of mm. upbringing and environment mm. and um, mm. and what he's learned, what he's gained and also then reflecting on him himself as he's become a father and then passing on things that he's learned to his own children. Mm. So yeah, so going back to be in location in his hometown was really important. And also trying to have a feel of the environment itself and the sounds of the environment, the feel of the environment <laughs> in the album. So one of the reasons for recording in that location was not just for the documentary. It was also so that the musicians recording could get a feel for and experience something of Wing's life as it was. Yeah, okay. So you're all entering into that environment, appreciating his history and actually physically by being in that space. Experiencing it. You're experiencing it. That's right. Yeah. So instead of, you know, he tells us the story behind the song and we try and imagine it and then go into a studio and record it. Yeah, this was, yeah a flashy studio in Taipei or something. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then, then this was, he was like, you know, okay, so some of the inspiration for this song comes from mm. a river that I used to go to with my friends when I was young and mm. we'd jump off the rock and mm. skim stones. And So let's all go there. And then we all go there and, oh, you know, nice. have a stone skimming yeah. competition and yeah. throw the keyboardist into the river and stuff like that. <laughs> And then come back and record the song. So then you know, you're, you're full of the experience. Oh, wow, yeah. That's an amazing way of recording and letting you enter into that atmosphere. Yeah, okay. So the album was successful. It was released last year. It won awards. So obviously people really enjoyed it. It was well acclaimed. Absolutely, um, yeah. It's had quite a significant if success. You, if you could introduce one song, which one would you introduce and maybe tell us what it, a little bit about what it's about? And if we can, we'll put a snippet of that in the uh, the podcast as well for people to listen to. So I think the most moving song on the album, it, it, the, the song translates as the guitar my brother left me. Mm. And uh, it's a song that Wing's written about his brother who, who passed away a couple of years before. Mm. Um, and it's a song that he wrote on the guitar that his brother left to him. He said his, you know, his brother had lots of guitars and yeah. he had cancer. And when he realised he didn't have that long left, he was mm. talking to Wing about the end of life and what to do with his stuff and mm. funeral and things. Mm. And he said, you know, I've got loads of guitars. You can give them to some of the young people in the church or you can give them to some young people that, you know, are interested in music. But keep mm. this one at our home, you know, keep it at our family oh, home. Oh, wow, yeah. So that every time you go back to, to Mainong, to, to our hometown, mm. then you've got a guitar you can play on mm. and um wing said it was after the, the funeral had finished you know he'd been busy he'd been trying to support his mum he'd been trying to get everything sorted mm. he just went back to their home and he picked up this guitar his brother had left him and started to play a song and a melody and he said he couldn't put lyrics to it because it was too emotional at the time mm. Mm. um but gradually you know he, he formed this song and it's really moving and i think for us one of the, the moving things was to be part of that actually in his album beforehand mm. he had written a song which he had sung together with his brother in hospital and that was one that with a transition that you were involved in the music for as well yeah i played guitar on that one which um, was amazing which the story behind that song was that you know wing he said his brother had always had the same passion for music that he himself had had mm. but his brother hadn't had the opportunities that wing had had and so right. wing yeah. had gone into music full time but his mm. brother couldn't and mm. Um, you know, he he did other work, but he yeah. still kept that musical kind of dream and yeah. um, passion alive. Mm. So I think, again, it was this sense of he hasn't got that long left, but I'd love to help him fulfill a dream. Yeah, okay. Thinks Wing of, mm. Mm. Um, you know, releasing a song and being a star, as it were. So <laughs> so Wing, <laughs> he, mm. he had this song uh, and he went into hospital and he got his brother to help record 
a vocal part and they sang it as a duet and they filmed a music video for it. Wow. Um, wow. So from from there to then this song of remembering and celebrating his brother's life was mm. yeah, it, mm. it really moving, really moving. I think certainly for me recording the drums shed a few tears mm. as, I, as I did it. Yeah, really emotional. And I think that's just such a meaningful way of celebrating his brother's life and the fact that he's left that guitar there as a kind of symbol and reminder and a celebration of all that he gave to Wing, you know, supporting Wing and yeah, also that reminder of living his life well and how much music meant to him, I think is, is really special too. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So people wanting to listen to this album, it's on all the streaming platforms, isn't it? And That's right, YouTube yeah. And yeah we'll, we'll, we can put the show in the show notes, the links to the video. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. We'll put a link up for that. For Great. Both, okay, we'll both see the video that. And, and the album itself mm. and the documentary. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And then that's not all you were involved in. There's a couple more highlights, which uh, maybe you'd like to mention. Yeah, rather an unusual story, um, in, and it actually is quite current because um, there's been a drama released in in Taiwan. Uh, actually, it's been on Netflix as well mm. over the last two months, I think, two or three months. Yeah, and uh, it's called Cha Jing, and Cha is tea, mm. and Jing is gold. Yeah, and um, it's it it's a historical documentary. It's a story that's it, it's based on history, uh, based in Taiwan in the area of. Shinju, so it's just south of Taipei, a little bit okay. in, in the countryside there. Yeah, uh, set in around about 1950, 1949 to the early 1950s. Okay, uh, and it it follows um, a, a tea company, mm. and really it's a family business, but mm. it's quite a big big company. And that's uh, before Taiwan was quite developed, isn't it? That's right. Um, you know, it's a tumultuous period in Taiwanese <laughs> yeah, history, okay. which without yeah. going into the whole. Mm background story of it anyway it, it's a fascinating story where you have it's set with this tea company but the background is of how the Taiwanese society is changing and being challenged yeah, and developing yeah. and you've got influences from America at the time you've got influences from the uh, KMT the Kuomintang government have just fled from China because they've just yeah, lost the civil war yeah. to the communists so they've just arrived in Taiwan and taken over as such yeah. um then, as I say, you've got American intervention there. Then you've got lots of different languages because the family, the tea company family are a Hakka family. So they're speaking in Hakka, but they're doing business with other people who are speaking Taiyu, Taiwanese or Hokkien. Mm. And then you've got people speaking Mandarin and then you've got some of the younger people in the drama who are speaking Japanese because yeah. Japan had been occupying until about four mm. years earlier at this mm. point, you know, till the end of the Second World War. So it's a big mishmash. And it gives you a really interesting window into what Taiwan was like just, you know, 70 years ago. Mm, mm. Um, which it, there aren't there aren't many other attempts at portraying that period of history in Taiwan. Yeah. So um, for me, it's very exciting because I'm, I'm fascinated by uh, Taiwan and the history and, and mm, all that kind mm. of thing. Um, but I also love tea. So what was really exciting was being called up one day and asked to go and act in the drama <laughs> and uh, you know I'm not an actor the only thing I've acted in is transition music videos and documentaries where I don't act I just play the drums so yeah, that was quite a, a challenge but um, they gave me the role of an English taxi driver well I'm sure you could fulfill that one well well it was funny so the story goes that at the end the mm, heroine of mm. the story she takes their most prized tea to London to a tea expert, oh great, yeah, uh, to to compete in this this tea in the competition. World tea competition. That's right, okay. yeah, yeah. So I was playing the taxi driver who was taking her from <laughs> the airport or the, wherever it was to her hotel, I think. Yeah. So yeah, so I had to pretend to be a taxi driver and and do a kind of <laughs> London taxi driver accent, a cabbie accent. The, the funniest thing was because 
it was all shot during the pandemic, of course, so they couldn't yeah. actually go abroad to film anything. Yeah, OK. So they hired in this London taxi and parked it in a special 3D animation studio. Mm. And they had these this huge walls all around of moving mm. moving screens and they'd animated London onto, onto <laughs> it. Mm. So the car was actually stationary. Mm. But when I sat in the car, as soon as I sat in the car and they started rolling the animation mm. i just really i got really motion sick oh no <laughs> so it's really embarrassing because i had to try and pretend that everything was fine but, <laughs> but you know really not look at the screens which are right in front of me oh dear <laughs> try and stare at the steering wheel without looking like i was going to crash <laughs> so it was, it was really unusual but yeah have to and then put the cabbie accent on and try and be all jolly with the uh, the actress in the back all right love first time here for tx bow in london then <laughs> So I had about, I think, you know, eight seconds of, of fame in that. But it was great to be a part of. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and so, um, you, so you've watched the, the drama? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it's, it's really good. Again, it's not a um, romantic, yep. comical thing, but it is quite funny and it's, mm. it's, very, mm. it's very informative. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so if you want to know about Taiwan, about the history of Taiwan, then it, it's a really good one to, to watch because it just gives such an understanding of mm. uh, such a window into what life must have been like at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, one of the final things I have to say about the experience of being in it was that I'd just finished the taxi driver part mm. and I was you know ready to go home. It was already well past midnight by this time because it, yeah. you know, it had to be filmed late. And they said, oh, we just need you to record a, a voiceover for us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, w- what's the what's the script? And they handed me the script. I was reading. Okay. Yep. This is fine. Oh, hang on a second. Who who's saying this? Ah, oh, is the uh, is the American president? <laughs> what? <laughs> <coughs> so, <laughs> right. Which one? <laughs> so then, you had to put on an American accent then after that. Well, it, but it's not just an American the accent. The president's like. <laughs> This was Harry Truman. Oh, really? So I was like, oh, quick, try and look up some of his speeches online and try, oh, and, great. try and get that accent in about yeah. five minutes to um, to then pretend that I, <laughs> so funny. I was Harry Truman. So, yeah, the United States. Um, Did they put it in? Have you watched it? Yeah, it's in. It's in. It, great. It, it's been um, it's been affected, thankfully. Okay. So yeah. it's... it's uh, Through an old-style microphone kind of effect. And... Well, they're in the car and it comes in on, oh, the, ra- okay. on the radio, you yep. see. Yep. So, um, so, yes, the voice of the American president, or twice, actually, the <laughs> two, two speeches that I had to read from Harry Truman and pretend to be him. So, yes, so if you watch the drama, there's actually three three things I do. The two Harry Truman speeches and one London taxi. <laughs> I didn't get to drink any tea, which was a shame, but... Um, well, hopefully it's in London now, being sold. <laughs> Next time you go there, you can you can find some. Wow, that sounds great. That's a really, uh, yeah, a really interesting recording project to be involved with. Yeah, and I've got to say, one of my favourite things over the last year was being able to play live. And we only played live once, and it was a small acoustic performance. But it was just so nice to be able to share music again with friends, music with people who, uh, a few people hadn't heard us before. And just to have that life and that joy you know, that comes with, with singing, with playing, with storytelling. And yeah, so we were able to go to London in October. It was supposed to celebrate the Zhong Chouzie, which is the Mid-Autumn Festival. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we, just, we sung a few of our songs. Ate some mooncake. Yeah, yeah, it was the whole experience, wasn't it? it? It was like being in a part of Taiwan, but in London. And so we had a lovely mix of people from both parts of the world, from the East and from the West. And one of my favorite things is the way that music brings people together. So as we sing, you know, some of our songs have got lyrics or bits that, that people can join in with. And you don't have to know Chinese to, to be able to engage with that. Yeah. And then the people who do know Chinese will maybe have that extra layer of understanding where they can laugh along, follow the story or just sing along in, in Chinese as well. And so for me, that was really special after a year of... Um, we're pretty much doing everything virtually, doing some songwriting, like you had your different projects. But then to have, yeah, one opportunity there to play play live was really great. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's definitely something that the pandemic makes us all not take for granted the things that we did before. Mm, <laughs> necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. And I think looking ahead actually to 2022, this, this year now, yeah, it's quite exciting that we've actually got some dates booked up. <laughs> yeah, we're going to play live, live again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
it's going to be great to be able to connect with people again. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, we've loved being back, loved sharing some of what we've been up to. I hope it's been interesting for everybody. We will be recording new podcast episodes this year. We're going to keep it going. That's right. Keep As you say, it's a, a new season. So, That's it. so there must be more. That's right. Yeah. And we're also, like we said, going out and playing live. So if you look on our Facebook, which is Facebook slash transition TW, you'll be able to get all the latest details. That's right. Also our website. All the website, transition.tk as well. Yeah. Okay. Catch you in the next episode. 